Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Education and my name is Abu Bakr Abdo. In this video, we are going to be looking at youth empowerment. Your youth, I'm a youth, so we are going to look at youth empowerment. And on that here, we're going to see the meaning of youth empowerment. We're going to see the ways to ways of empowering people we're going to look at the need for empowerment program or let's say programs rather we're going to look at the purpose of youth empowerment we're going to look at the types of empowerment skills that we have and then we're going to look at the importance of youth empowerment and finally we are going to look at the hindrance to youth empowerment so let's go straight to the first item here the meaning of youth empowerment first let me, let me let me just explain what empowerment means empowerment is the process of training and educating an individual so he can acquire a means of livelihood it's the process of training and educating an individual so he can acquire a means of livelihood or skills so that would help him sustain himself in the society basically that's what empowerment when you empower someone you are either training that person or you are educating that person to acquire a means of livelihood so now when we talk about the youth of course you know the youth now myself i'm a youth you looking at um, watching this video right now you're the youth so when we're talking about em youth empowerment basically we're talking about empowering the youth empowering the youth in a particular society so they can sustain themselves by acquiring skills that will help them earn a livelihood, that will help them make money, that will help them sustain themselves. Basically, that is what youth empowerment has to do. Alleviating poverty, promoting self-sustenance in a society, that's what youth empowerment is all about. So now, what are the ways to empower people what are the ways to empower people when you look at it when you look at it basically there are three ways to empower people you can you can educate them you can teach them entrepreneurial skills or indoctrinating them now when we will talk about educate them of course teach them knowledge give them knowledge give them information information that could empower them information that could enlighten them so they will know better if you give people knowledge if you give people information you are empowering those people because now they know better and they can address their problem differently and in a better way maybe before they don't know any better and then they have a problem they might address the problem casually without any skill or anything like that but when they are educated they address this problem in a more adequate and a more effective manner teaching them entrepreneurial skill of course entrepreneur is someone is someone is is an employer of labor is someone who is doing something is someone who has a skill that can generate money for him so when you teach people these skills you are empowering these people entrepreneurial skills such as sewing mechanic work even um, maybe welding or so all these are entrepreneurial skills skills that you learn and skills that you can actually use to earn money these are entrepreneurial skills and now we're talking about indoctrinating them we are talking about inculcating this sense of self-reliance in them we are talking about make them feel this essence that they need to sustain themselves you have to teach them you have to show them that okay this is not an option this is something you really have to do so, to sustain yourself this is something you have to do to have a better standard of living these are ways that you can empower people these three ways you can either educate them you can teach them entrepreneurial skills or you can you know indoctrinating them giving them this 
sense, this mentality of self-reliance and self-sustenance. Now let us look at the need for, inter for empowerment program. Since we say empowerment is basically talking about training and educating an individual so they can acquire a means of livelihood. What is the need for empowerment program? When we talk about empowerment program, we're talking about programs, seminars, workshops that deal with discussions or serve as platform where people can come and be empowered. Of course, well, maybe one, once or twice you've heard about skill acquisition program or the likes. All these are empowerment program. So what are the needs for empowerment program in our society? The following are some of the needs of empowerment program in our society. Number one, they help solve problems of nature. Their skills, of course, are used in problem solving. So they help solve problems of nature. Number two, they help to develop immediate environment. Of course, they help the people, that's the people who are being empowered to develop their immediate environment. Through these programs, that they can acquire the skills, that they can have this information, that they could be educated, they could be taught entrepreneurial skills. Through these programs, they can develop their immediate environment. Let's assume, okay, uh, someone teaches me how to sink boreholes. Ball of course, when I go back to my community, there's this feeling that, okay, I want to do this in my community. And I'll source for uh, sponsorship so they can develop their immediate environment. And then lastly, we have, oh, okay, not lastly, actually, it fights boredom and restiveness. Of course, these programs fight boredom. When these programs are absent, people are just there. They are not doing anything. They don't know any better. But creation of this program helps fight boredom and restiveness. Also, it promotes resourcefulness, talent development, innovation, and initiatives. This en empowerment program creates or promotes resourcefulness, talent development, innovation, and initiative. Number five, transfer skills to younger people and make them develop the sense of commitment to nation building. Transfer skills to younger people and make them develop the sense of commitment to nation building. Then finally, it also have good training ground on leadership, governance, and excellence. All these are the need of empowerment program. It helps people. It helps their initiative, their innovations. It brings it out. When you have an empowerment program, probably someone is there and within him they actually have this talent but they don't even know about it simply because they've not had the opportunity to come in, uh, have the opportunity of coming in an environment where these potentials can be harnessed. So through this empowerment program, these potentials are harnessed, they are taught more and then they, have, they get this feeling that, okay, I want to do more. If you've been to any of this empowerment program, you are going to understand what I'm talking about right now and if you've not i encourage you to try just try and go to one and you can see how it will affect you so now let us move to the purpose of youth empowerment but before that a question is going to pop up on your screen right now and i want to believe that you're going to answer it without any difficulty or so so here's the question Okay, welcome back from that, and I hope you answered that question correctly. So before the question popped up, I said we were going to talk about the purpose of youth empowerment. Why should youth in a society, in a community be empowered? The following are some of the purpose of youth empowerment. They include poverty reduction and eradication strategy, number two, job creation, Number three, value-oriented. Number four, wealth generation and using education to empower the people. All these are some of the purpose of youth empowerment. The basic, the most basic one, the most important one being poverty reduction or eradication. 
basically that is the first purpose that's the main primary purpose of youth empowerment is to reduce poverty in a society or even to eradicate it entirely that's the primary purpose of youth empowerment so now we've looked at the purpose of youth empowerment let us look at the types of empowerment skill we have there are a couple of the couple of empowerment skills we have but we are going to basically just look at um i think about five or so so number one we have the life coping skills these are skills that are in it these are skills that are instinctive in man how to cope how to survive how to deviate from danger of course no man in his right sense would want to put himself in danger no man in his right sense would just go in, in the middle of the freeway or highway and just stand and he's seen a big truck coming to him and he's going to stand there no nobody's going to do that in his right sense except that person is uh, maybe is mentally ill or something like that so these are life coping skills and it's a type of empowerment skills when people have this natural instincts to survive to earn is an empowerment skill secondly we have the manipulative skills and this has to do with um, skills involving economic activities that inculcate skills such as technical education computer field events mining manufacturing technological work scientific experiment construction engineering productive ventures you mention it all these are manipulative skills the skills basically to turn raw material into finished goods the skill to do a scientific experiment and bring out a finding the skill to go dig beneath the ground mine bring out raw materials all these are manipulative skills and now the next skills we are going to talk about is the communicative skills it's also an type of empowerment skills the communicative skills of course it's a very important skill because without communication how can you develop how can you be empowered if you cannot communicate a lot of people have this problem because there's no communication they tend to have a lot of problems because they don't understand each other so to understand each other you need to communicate and you need communicative skills now before in the old days of course some of the communicative and uh, some of the means of communication involved uh, the wood or metal drum, smoke, town criers, these are mediums of communication. But now we have easier means of communication, especially with the information and communication technology, ICT. We have easier means of communication, such as the phone, the internet, Web 2.0, does interactive mediums such as WhatsApp, Facebook, and the rest. All these are easier means of communication. So communication skills is very, 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 very important. And basically, I think it's even the most important empowerment skill we have is the communicator skill. Now let's just move to the intellectual skills. Of course, the intellectual uh, skills are coordinative in character. It is literally or theoretically theoretical framework that guide the practical aspect of the world's economy and scientific undertakings. In the primary sense, it is called brain work. Anything that has to do with your brain, come out from your brain. That is the intellectual skills, your ability to think, to be innovative, your ability to have initiatives. It all starts from your brain. It's all brain work. It all happens here first. Before it comes down, you put it down in writing, and then you actually begin to implement whatever idea it is that you have birthed. So intellectual skill is very important also it's very important and then finally we have the artistic skills of course from the word artistic we are talking about skills that involve maybe drama literature your arts blacksmith creating something out of nothing metal designs canvas painting pictures all these are artistic artistic skills artistic skills and they are all types of empowerment skills because someone who can write drama has the chance of selling that drama and getting money out of it. A painter has the, uh, has the opportunity of painting and selling his painting. It's actually all employable labor. So that is the last type of skills, uh, empowerment skills that we are going to look at. Now, what are the importance of youth empowerment? Of course, I'm sure by now that you should know that youth empowerment 
it's very important but then again what are the importance of youth empowerment so the following are some of the importance of youth empowerment number one it makes for the transfer of skills and work ethics number two it gives or adds meaning to life especially as one is given a position of authority or as one commands respect number three it helps to reduce crime rate number four it leads to self employment and rapid industrialization number five it facilitates the process of nation building and development number six one saves money to cater for urgent needs and family matters and then finally it enables one to consider vital tenets and societal values and committing oneself to worthwhile values all these are some of the importance of youth empowerment in our society all these are some of the importance of youth empowerment in our society now finally what are the problems what are the hindrance to youth empowerment like in nigeria one of the problems that we have is that the youth are not empowered that is why you see a lot of hoodlums a lot of touts a lot of thoughts in the streets now if these youths are empowered if they know better if they are educated if they are trained if they are taught entrepreneurial skills of course they are not going to stay in the street they will try as much as possible to work and earn a living i mean who wants to be poor nobody wants to be poor but it's simply because again okay, some of these platforms are not made available or accessible to them that is why you still have thoughts and talks in the society so now what are the hindrances to youth employment why is it that some youth or in some society youth are not empowered why is it that some society youths are not empowered the following are some of the hindrances of youth empowerment in a society number one is inconsistency in government programs that is the lack of consistency in programs implementation can be a problem to youth empowerment leaders with good and well thought out empowerment programs for the youth need to ensure that these ideas are put into practice to help the youth participate actively in the development process inconsistency in government program sometimes you see the government will create an empowerment program so okay in this empowerment program we are trying to reach maybe 10,000 youths like in Nigeria they're trying to use 10 they reach 10,000 youths but because governments are sometimes not consistent or the people who are in charge of this empowerment program are not consistent they are not honest they are dishonest you tend to see that these programs do not see the light of day at the end of the day they don't get to be done they don't get to be implemented and that is one big hindrance for youth empowerment number two corruptive tendency of course where does corruption come from? It's come from dishonest people, people who do not have fear of God in their heart, people who are not trustworthy. So when you bring about youth empowerment and 10,000 youths are supposed to benefit from it, but because there is cor corruptive tendency, because some people want to, should I say, amass part of the money budgeted for this empowerment program at the end of the year realize only maybe 3000 youths are reached and are empowered and the remaining 7000 are left out still running the street so that is another big hindrance another big problem to youth empowerment number 3 decadent educational system decadent educational system here it says transference of skills are basically packaged through good functional educational system this is unfortunate unfortunately lacking in nigeria due to many factors a non-functional education cannot host successfully an empowerment scheme and cannot ensure efficiency of course decadent educational system when the educational system is not strong because some of these youth empowerment program or initiative or even ideology are instilled in youth from school that is why if you go to the university right now there is a course there they call um 
entrepreneurship. Basically, what it teaches you is it teaches you about how you can become an entrepreneur. But simply because there's the problem with the educational system itself, this knowledge are not really passed on to the youth. And then they just come out, and even though they go to the school, you tend to ask yourself, what is the use of some people going to school? So some of the problem of youth empowerment is decadent educational system. So now let's take one last one, and then we'll call it a day for this video. And that is foreign skills. Here we're talking about some skills are just imported and taught when they may not be vital ground to practice them or utilize them. Foreign skills, skills that are brought taught to people and then these people you don't give them the platform that they can utilize and actually use this information you teach them take for instance you teach someone how to edit a video and the software that you are teaching someone with is a software that is not accessible in that community what is the use of that entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurial skill it's useless because the knowledge that you're giving that person is not useful to him. It's foreign. It's not something that's applicable in that particular community. So that is what, how, or rather that is how foreign skill becomes a hindrance to youth empowerment. Because if you teach them something and they cannot practice it in their community, then there is no use for them to learn it in the first place. So that's basically all we have for this video, talking about youth empowerment as always some questions are going to pop up on your screen and i believe you're going to answer them correctly i still remain abubakar abdul bye bye for now